everybody welcome and we are interviewing uh, mr prakash shishadri today he is also known as the corporate yogi and he's the founder and ceo of see change consulting in chennai india he's known for his path of breaking work on several fronts be it writing books turning around orga- organizations ceo coaching being a keynote speaker a movie consultant a sports coach which is very interesting and an avid nation builder he has been meditating for close to 3 decades now and the mix of management leadership and spirituality based writings and talks of his bring forth and the much needed clarity to emerging and leading ceos he's also a keynote speaker a movie consultant and he his latest new book is called the spiritual ceo so we're going to talk about it with him and uh, so it's my proud privilege to introduce to you the author of the book mr prakash shadri so i welcome him prakash um Thank hello you. prakash how are you today i am doing good wonderful would you mind sharing a little bit about you so that viewers from my side will also know about uh, your background i know a lot about you but it would be nice to hear from you uh i am actually um the golden light i'm also a soul strategist and so i do workshops retreats around the world i'm the owner and founder of bhavna's wellness group in massachusetts and i'm also a um, founder of a nonprofit called saving people um it was created last year in need uh you know so we started to help people around uh, locally and uh, in us um so that's a little bit about me it's a sacred holistic a holistic wellness center uh taking care of people from all walks uh giving them a balanced wellness creating wonderful. peace within themselves really wonderful. and love creating ripples of love basically wonderful. ripples so of love is a really a beautiful uh, word you know ripples of love i mean it's really exactly wonderful. exactly so that's a vision shown to me by god and i'm just pursuing it you know a lot of people like to um I forget to keep wearing taking off my so a lot of people uh you know like to uh have a vision and then move forward Correct. you know for me it's more of the vision shown to me by god and that's what i uh you know i'm taking forward wonderful okay so tell me uh tell us you are here talking about your book um i have heard so much about this and i am actually excited about to know about it so if you could tell me a little bit about you know how you came upon this where this thought came and you know let's start with that yeah thank you bhavna i mean uh, from a spiritual background you would really know what it means to resonate at higher levels with a lot of research being done where uh, the purpose of uh, human does not just uh, get completed from birth to death only running after material pursuits but there is something uh, in a calling which is much much higher which when pursued you will find that the material things also get accomplished and you also sort of uh, gravitate the world to much higher levels than what it currently is with a lot of uh, research that has gone into the last 20 30 years including the latest fad we call the schumann resonance and things like that people have found that resonating at very low frequencies of only living and uh, getting out of the office back to home and home to office and things like that tires people out even without the knowledge my interaction in the last 3 and a half decades with uh, several top uh, industry ceos uh, directors the moves and shakers of uh, what you call as uh, the complete uh, planet earth one thing i had found that everyone seemed to have something a calling which uh, sometimes took them several decades to find out and lucky are those who are able to find out much earlier and uh, when i had already completed so i have been writing since 1998 and i had already finished and released about uh, 10 books some of them went on to become bestsellers the love and book when i was searching for some kind of a substance is when pandemic struck the covid attack so and, uh, 
I'm going to interject here. So all yeah, your please. books have been on the same similar path or they've been different? Uh, I have uh, started my career. Rather, I start my career in sales and marketing. So my initial two, three books were uh, woven around the topic of sales, marketing, self-help, and things like that. Subsequent books, I moved on to uh, HR strategies, and then I moved on to business rebuilding, specifically during the 2008 recession, which hit uh, the world. I had done some research on what actually makes organizations survive even the toughest of period. And based on the research, I came out of the book at the time called Future Proof Your Business. And subsequently, it got translated into several languages. And there were other minor, there are other minor works as well. But this book, as a seed, came to me in a thought in while I was meditating, that the world needs role models, and the role models today come from corporate world. Uh, no That's more, right. no more. Only yogis have to come and change the world. The people in corporate because they meet thousands and thousands every day, and they can touch the raw nerve. And if you're in, able to instill the spiritual values while still grounding them on the material success of life. I felt that the CEOs could become absolute role models where they could influence uh, generations to come. And that became the seed for this book, actually, just to put it in a very small uh, way. Of course, it expanded. I used uh, the Indian mythology. I used a lot of examples from English movies and things like that to drive home the point that uh, there is a larger cause. And while working towards that larger cause, you will also be able to achieve much better financial results for which organizations normally strive for. That is good to know. So um, tell me a little bit uh, you talk about in the book, you know, uh, what do you mean by corporate karma? Wonderful. Uh, those at least from the Eastern side, uh, the Eastern mystics would understand the importance of karma and like what you sow is what you reap. And if you have to take it as a Western philosophy, they would call it as cause and effect. Uh, there is no effect without a cause. And when this cause is made by the thoughts, actions, and deeds of a person, uh, when they all come together in a corporate life, wouldn't it have an impact? This I've been studying actually silently for quite some time. And surprisingly, in my research or in my observation, I would rather say, I had found out that many organizations which had tremendous amount of potential, the best of product services, good market, weren't successful. And uh, run-of-the-mill companies were actually being extremely successful. When I get uh, closer to them, when I observed their patterns, I found out that the thoughts and deeds of these people uh, seemed to create an egregore which was far better than the people who couldn't do that. And that's what was making the organizations go wrong. And when I went so back, is it, yeah, So I'm going to interject here. Yeah, I, I, I just love to talk. Feel free. So, uh, so tell me, so is it similar to our karmas, you know, as we talk about a karma of a person? Yes. So does that mean the same thing? Is exactly. like is see if I am if I and you are talking, if suddenly someone enters this uh, recording room and they start talking, the entire thing changes. And that is based on what you would call as the vibratory level of the person. You want to call it as a karmic value of the person or whatever the fate lines. Uh, the moment you put three people, five people, 5,000 people in some kind of a cauldron and mix them up, it does seem to have an impact on the output of the organization itself. Uh, karma, cause and effect, what do you want to call? Corporate karma is a word that I coined uh, just to create an impact. Uh, they will understand that for the success of any corporate, the karmic uh, balance of all the people, how good, how bad, makes a huge difference in the, uh, the future of the organization itself. It does. I actually totally agree with you, you know, owning the business myself. And, you know, I always want to invite people who are like-minded, exactly. who want to spread uh, love and peace in the world, not just want to come in to make money. So it makes okay. totally sense what you're talking about, you know. Okay. So I totally agree with that. So tell me a little bit about, you know, the formula you use in the book, the spiritual alchemy, the Quintus quant essential formula, what you talk about, what is that? Spiritual alchemy, if, if all of us, uh, right from the book uh, that Paul Coelho wrote long ago, The Alchemist, the, the people's dream is always about converting something of a lower substance to a higher substance at the fastest speed. In this example, a normal metal into gold. Uh, this is what normally we understand. When is uh, 
you're talking about spiritual alchemy, whether you read Mahabharata, whether you read the life of Christ, whether you read the life of Muhammad the Prophet, whether you read the life of Buddha or James, you will find that they picked up normal people and then transformed and metamorphosized them into uh, superhuman beings or divine human beings. Being a spiritual person yourself, carrying the light of God, you will understand that uh, that is a metamorphosis which I would call as an alchemy and towards that process, a lot of work will have to happen. I would call it as a combination of IQ, EQ, SQ, and AQ. IQ here standing for intelligence quotient. EQ standing here for emotional quotient. SQ standing for uh, spiritual quotient. And AQ standing for uh, adaptability quotient. And when so this, you're blending all three together. All four. <laughs> all four. Okay. Yeah. And that that becomes the uh, karmic quotient finally. <laughs> the the alchemy. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Yes, that is very interesting because, you know, I haven't heard about all of them coming together or seeing it in from that perspective. That's very interesting to know. But how does that, uh, what does that create and how, what's the cause of it? What's the effect of it? And where's your focus going with that? Finally, uh, nothing would impress a CEO or a person runs an organization unless it has an impact on the profit and loss of content balance sheet. This is something I've understood in the last three, three and a half decades of my consulting uh, experience and running several businesses. Whatever gyan, as they say in Indian parlance, you give or knowledge that you give, if it doesn't uh, become uh, money in some way, they are not going to listen to that. In some of the organizations where I had worked and helped them evolve as part of the spiritual alchemy process, a spiritual DNA, the basic core value systems of uh, mutual trust and respect, love, compassion. Uh, ability even to accept somebody's fault as a human fault, not as an intentional fault, has uh, brought about fantastic results in the organization. People at the end of the day are happy when they go out of the office smiling with a smile on their face instead of frown. And when they get exactly. into the office on a Monday morning, the typical Monday morning blows don't happen. Some of the researches you will find on the best organizations or best places to work Without knowledge, with the knowledge, they have been following all these principles. And that's what, in fact, I've just put together and codified them as uh, these spiritual principles in this book. So I love that. And I am in talking more about, you know, the spiritual aspect of it. So what do you mean by a spiritual CEO? Because we're talking about spiritual. Yeah. I want to continue and understand and how the karma of that CEO affects that entire corporation. Okay, and here when I mind and mind, body, soul, balance, you know, I just love to talk about it because I'm I'm doing that. I'm myself yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm when, curious to know about it. Yeah, when when you enter your first grade in school, you are introduced to a subject called mathematics. You start reading mathematics. And at the 10th grade, or when you enter your pre-grad and then you go into a master's, you still read mathematics, but you'll be reading mathematics in a much a deeper way spirituality and spiritual CEO is also like that. You begin a journey someday. At the lowest level, I define a spiritual CEO as a person whose personal vision, the organizational vision and the global vision are in alignment. Fab, when I say about personal and global vision, I'm talking about an individual working in the organization whose peace, happiness and well-being is guaranteed. See, uh, when you spoke about uh, body, mind, soul, this is something we all suffer with. People overwork themselves. They don't even take care of their body. They eat food which is not compatible. I've done a lot of research on the, the three, three, three kinds of food Indian uh, literature prescribed, you know, the rajasic, tamasic, sattvic kind of foods, how it impacts the body, how it impacts the mind, and how finally it impacts the soul. When you become and that's, aware, the, that's the Ayurveda uh, part of the yes, you're talking about. Yes, yes. That is a chapter dedicated to the food uh, where I talk, I don't just talk about the Indian food, I speak about all the food and the kind of food I even tell people, just eat a food, wait for a few minutes, see how your mood changes. If the mood changes for the positive, it's a good food that you're having. If it's mood changes for the bad, whether it's mm -hmm. a junk food or whatever food, it's not in alignment with your own personal uh, bodily requirements. These are the small steps, baby steps that a person I love takes. that. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's something for people who are watching us, the viewers, to know, yeah. Yeah. to pay attention to. You know, this is a really important point he brings out, is 
for all the CEOs, because if the CEO's mood changes, the company's, the employer's mood changes, mm -hmm. you know, and if the CEO is, so it's like a responsibility for them mm -hmm. to be very mindful of what they're eating, you know, what they're consuming in their body, how they come and react to situations and mm -hmm. how they think, because that's how others in the, you know, company will be, it's, it's a, Action, exactly. Action creates the reaction. Kind of. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So wonderful. So now, do you also talk about the employees also choosing that? Or uh, is it just for the CEO? There are, there are organizations which take it as a holistic development where they put all uh, the staff through this process. We also start first with the awareness campaign where people understand what it is, how the food impacts and how lack of exercise impacts. Even if I looked at uh, some of the happy chemicals, as they call the dopamine effect, the oxidosin, the serotonin, and the endorphins, and all that, they seem to have a huge impact. And they are created uh, partly by the food, partly by the mood swings of the people around you. And all that uh, gets automatically balanced and regulated when you have a larger purpose in front of you. When you are not, not just a PNL item for a person, I am not treated as just one employee number. I'm a person in flesh and blood with emotions, feelings, I have a family, I have a future, and I have my own vision and purpose for which I have, in my view, come to this world. When I am able to peacefully coexist and allow everybody else to allow that to flourish, imagine what kind of a lovely workplace we would have. As Carl Sagan beautifully put it, the astronaut, when I saw the earth from outside, it was just a simple blue dot. Why so much complication when we do inside it? So you're talking about how, what is supposed to be the traditions and the values and the beliefs of the corporations, yeah, yeah. which is set up by the CEO of the company. Exactly. Way back so in it's the middle, very important. Very yes. interesting uh, survey, which was done by one of the leading, uh, something like Howard in the mid nineties, they started in fact, uh, developing a pattern. They found out what is a spiritually inclined organization. And they predominantly gave the focus to organizations which have values where peaceful coexistence is the key, where morality and ethics takes over profits and uh, black marketing and things like that. And when everyone starts following that, uh, you would automatically find that we all resonate at a much higher mental uh, and heart frequency, which would allow us to peacefully be in this. After all, at the end of the day, we need peace, happiness, and right. uh, maybe a peaceful sleep when I, when I get into the bed. <laughs> and not taking medications <laughs> to exactly, sleep. Exactly, exactly. In my own personal example, I can say that uh, I am nearing 60. Uh, thanks to whatever I have see to a great extent, if you don't practice what you preach, it doesn't say. And uh, I am not on any medication uh, to date for anything. I have a reasonably a balanced uh, approach to whatever I do. <clears throat> Though you can say that uh, financial output does matter to many of us, I have a reasonably uh, good balance on body, mind, soul, which is what I created as a separate chapter, where my spiritual goals are aligned. And when I say spiritual goals, it's beyond religion. It doesn't matter whether your belief system is that of Christianity or Islam or Hinduism or whatever, or even if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter. As long as we all believe in a larger purpose of common good, that itself in my view is a spiritual world to start with. Wonderful, I love that. You know, I feel uh, this book should be available to all the people, uh, you know, all the CEOs of all organizations should read that, as well as it should be taught in schools, you know, and I feel in the high schools and even in the colleges so that people can come with the mindset exactly. as they move towards in their journey. And every CEO should actually read it before they start a business. You, you, know? you, you it should be it. their handbook. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> it should be their handbook before yeah. they go that this is this is what they should create with whatever yeah. Yeah. they wanted to do, whether it's a small business or a big, big business or a big yeah. foundation or, you know, so they, they can go in with that mindset. Correct. So it shifts because it's not just that one person company. It's yeah. that... Yeah it's a collaboration and a collective mind, yeah. which is working toward that same mission of that one CEO. Beautifully said it, you beautifully said it. 
Wonderful. So tell me a little bit, I, I love to wrap this up because this is like, yes. I mean, I could go on talking about it and take more knowledge from you because being a CEO myself of this yeah. wonderful two organizations I've created, you know, tell me if you had to say something to the people, as we just talked about, what is that that you would like to tell them, like with the research you've gone through, you know, and how it has shifted you, what have you noticed and where have you taken this work in your personal journey? If there is one small message that I want to give, which I do give through the book, it doesn't matter whether it's micro, macro, small, big, each one of us can leave a legacy on this earth. Our life is not just an hyphen between the year of birth and year of death. The hyphen is the life that we live by. And that life when we lead by values and vision, we can become part of history as well. So we have two choices. Either you can watch history being made by somebody else, or we can be the history that's being written. So the choice is with us. I love that. I love that, that we can create our own history and leave our own legacy is like very well said. You know, that when we are connected and we are balanced, uh, and we are the spiritual CEOs, <laughs> then we can create this beautiful world exactly. together. Exactly. In fact, incidentally, today, the day on which we are recording the video, which is 19th of April, this book has been uh, pre-release, pre-book release has been made pan world, uh, across the world in India, USA, Europe, all over the world, uh, it has already been announced today. But I'm very happy that uh, I'm being interviewed by you just after the official book launch. The pre-booking launch has been done today. I'm, I'm really happy that I'm sharing this with you as the first person to hear on our uh, record. Wonderful. I, I wanted to congratulate you on that, on your pre-launch, and, okay. and wish you all the best and success. And hope this book reaches everybody because this would change how the world is you know, today with the corporates and the mindsets and will bring more peace and happiness into every individual working in some company or and, any company. In and the world. as you rightly said, let the ripples of love flow. Exactly, exactly. And that's where the CEO is the one who creates yes. that ripples of yes. love and it yes. just flows down, you exactly. know. Exactly, exactly. Just like the vortex, you know. Exactly. Um, you know, it starts from the top and goes down all the way. Right. Exactly. Wonderful. Thanks so uh, thank you, Mr. Prakash. It, this was great talking with you. Thank you. And very much. I loved it. And it, to interview, this was my honor. And uh, I am I'm very I'm sure a day will, I'm, I'm very sure a day will come when you will write a book on the topic that is close to your heart, and I'll be the first person to do. I actually do have two books already. The third um, one I will interview then. <laughs> third one you can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm I'm writing two books separately, so one is almost done. Okay. It's uh, the it's on ancestral clearing, okay. ancestral uh, you know relationships yeah, yeah. we receive in our lives and how yes. that affects our relationships. Yes, exactly. you know what we learn. Sometimes we have to unlearn, and sometimes we have to take Beautiful. those values. Beautiful. So that is one book I'm writing, and then another book is on Jesus and oh, his. Wonderful. Um, okay. you know, when he was a child yeah. and his hidden years, which people okay. don't know much about. Yes. So that's a book I'm channeling. Okay. Really great uh, chatting with you, Bhavna. Thanks a lot. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you. Bye-bye.